Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. Today we are going to be talking about adding foiling to your projects without needing to buy any expensive machines. I will share with you which are my favorite ideas as we go, and I hope at the end of the video you will share with me which are your favorite ideas, or if you have a technique that you use that I didn't cover, I'd love to know about that. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we dive into the techniques today, let's just talk briefly about foil. There are different kinds of foil. Some do require the heat of a laminator machine or similar product. This is Deco Foil. That's the brand by Thermoweb. And it does not require heat, but it can be used with heat. So be careful when you're buying foil that you know that you're getting a kind that does not require heat. Now when you open up tubes of foil, it often has multiple sheets in there and they are fairly thin, so you do have to kind of um, twist them apart. Now foil is a clear carrier sheet plastic with a foiling kind of sprayed onto it. So when you add it to your projects, you wanna add it pretty side up because that is the side you will continue to see once you peel up the carrier sheet. All right, with the basics down, let's go ahead and add that foil to our projects. And the best way to start is just with the tape runners and adhesives that you already have on hand. I have a variety of tape runners here, even a specialty shaped tape runner. Now that's not required, but it is fun and it is something inexpensive that you can add to your stash if you like the idea of playing with foils. So as you can see, you just need to run a strip of adhesive onto your project. And some adhesives are dots or strips and that means you can uh, wiggle them in different shapes and patterns and you can get uh, undulating lines instead of just straight lines with these tapes. Now here is one of the dotted ones and because the dotted ones have less adhesive you will get a less bold look to it as well. So that way you can vary up what you've got going on in your project. And now here I am using this specialty shaped tape and these are just little spots of hearts and now you can see I added the foil to it, but I missed some spots and it's fairly easy to just go back to that spot and add a little bit more foil over the top of it. Don't forget that any of your tearaway tapes will work as well. And if you need some tips on keeping straight lines, if you have a background with a grid on it, it's easy to stretch those tape products across so that they line up with the lines of the grid. Or you can use a ruler to run your tape gun or tape runner along the edge of the ruler. Now here's a case where the foil has a directionality to it. So you have to pay attention to which way you want the colors of your foil to end up. Now here's a tip that may surprise you. You can just use plain old scotch tape for doing this. Just put the sticky side of your tape down on the back side of the foil and then pull it away and you'll have a foiled tape, much like a washi tape, except you'll need to add your own adhesive to attach this to your project. So let's take a look at all of those ideas in one photo before we move on to the next idea. Next up are more adhesives that you probably already have on hand. So we're going to be talking about glue dots as well as foam or pop dots and the different looks you can get with those. Now I have squares and strips and of course these glue dots are kind of circular. So I'm going to play with all of these on our project. And when we get to the final photo at the end, I'm going to tell you something that I really like about those glue dots. In the meantime, we will just keep foiling away and there's not a lot of difference to this technique versus the tape runner technique. Again, you can use rulers to line up your bits and pieces if that's what you would like to do. The nice thing about using foams is that they do come in different colors. You can have a white foam or a black foam to get a very slightly different look to your project. And mostly the dimension of the foam is what is fun for this technique. And we'll get to one piece in particular that I really like. Now there is some samples of various shapes and sizes. And next up, we have specifically shaped foams. And this is really fun. I have some stars here that are made specifically for doing these types of projects. You can use foil, you can use flocking, you can use glitter. All of those kind of products can be used, these foam adhesives. Now the bits I have out here are by Queen and & Company. And these are actually made for shaker elements on projects. 
but I'm totally going to use them as foiled elements for projects. You saw me foil a square up there and that will make a beautiful frame to frame out some other piece of a project. Here I am foiling a rainbow and it's accompanying cloud. Now it's a little hard to see uh, live because the lighting for foiling is pretty tricky, but we'll get to that close up photo. So don't forget when you're doing foam, you can use your Big Mama foam tape rolls and get a big stripe of foam as long as you want it to be. Let's go ahead and take those close up photos. Isn't that rainbow so pretty with the rainbow foil? And here's a tip, the cloud I did with the rainbow foil as well, I just used bits of leftover blue foil from other parts of the sheet and I just kept tapping in that color until my cloud was complete. Now this final close up is what I was hinting to earlier about those glue dots. If you look in the bottom right corner, you can see just a little bit of dimension to that glue dot. And that's really fun because if you like the look of say brads or enamel dots, but you don't like the bulk, this could give you something similar without adding lumps and bumps to your project. Next up, we're gonna talk about adhesives that you may not have in your stash, but I recommend having at least some on hand and that is adhesive sheets. Now you can do this technique as well as other techniques with these adhesive sheets, so they're good to have on hand. And when I say sheets, some of these do come in wide rolls that you can use like sheets. Um, I don't recommend that roll that I have, so I'm gonna stick with this sheet. And any products that I mention, I will put in the description. So don't worry about that, I will have you covered there. Because these are double-sided adhesive sheets, you're gonna need to stick them down to some kind of product. I'm just using a scrap of backing sheet from a packaging, it might be better to use like a printer paper and I'll let you know why in a minute. What I'm doing with these newly adhesived papers is die cutting them or punching them to get the shapes I want to foil. And here I die cut the word thanks, peeled off the protective coating on the sticky sheet and then applied that foil to my die cut word. But look, we have this extra piece left over that we can use for another project. So this is a two for one. All right, next up, we're gonna punch these adhesive sheets. And this is where I would maybe recommend using a printer paper instead of the cardstock that I used because some punches are a little too delicate for punching through the thickness of the adhesive and the cardstock. So a printer paper may give you success, but don't put that punch away yet because I have another tip that will help with that. And you just apply the foil in the same way that we did with the die cuts. Remember, you can save any of the negative shapes from your punching or die cutting and foil those as well, and save those negative foil carrier sheets for more projects. So let's take a closer look at all of these pieces we created with this adhesive sheet technique. Up next, we're gonna play with toner sheets. Now this really is a specialty product, but I tell you, it is still way cheaper than owning any kind of foiling machine. So these sheets are made with printer toner and it's adhered to a backer cardstock piece and you can just use it as is. So I'm cutting these sheets down to size and I'm going to punch and die cut them much like I did with the adhesive sheets and we're going to get a similar look but I find these just a little bit easier to work with than the adhesive sheet technique and because it's a thinner product than what I was doing with the adhesive sheets you can get more intricate punches to work with this. So now that you've got your shapes and pieces what do we do next? You can run them through a laminator but if you don't have a laminator you can just use your plain old clothes iron. You do need to be careful about protecting your surface. I have a glass mat, which is heat proof. I'm also adding a silicone mat under that, which is used for baking, so it's heat proof. That adds a little bit of cushion to my project to help really press these pieces together. But you could also just use a couple pieces of scrap cardstock. Then I cover that all up with just a plain sheet of printer paper to help keep my iron clean. You don't wanna to touch your iron to the plastic or the foil because it can get melty gunk on your iron. We will take a closer look at those in a second, but here I wanted to show you, I'm foiling a small piece, it's just a square of the toner sheet, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the foil before I do anything to it. I'm gonna actually die cut that out after I've already foiled it, and that's perfectly valid. It just gives you fewer quote unquote leftover bits to play with, but you may not even want those bits anyway. 
And here is one more tip, either with these toner sheets or the adhesive sheets. If you're doing a larger area, you can get wrinkles in your foil and that can leave gaps in your project. I will just reposition my foil to reheat it and, and fill in those gaps. But if you have a foil like this rainbow where the colors matter, you just have to do that step very carefully so that you're matching up your colors. And in the end of this, we have some gorgeous projects. I really wish the camera could pick up all the colors all at once, but the angle of light really matters when photographing foil. We've talked about other kinds of adhesives, but what about glue? Yes, you can use glue if it's the right kind of glue. So the right kind of glue is a glue that is tacky when it's dry. And I have two examples here, a quickie glue pen, which I'm using right now, and that tube of smart glue from scrapbook.com. Now there's also a brand called Zig to a glue pen, which could work for this as well. Again, links in the description. And the great thing about using these glues is that you can do freestyle designs like I did here with my handwriting. And you just have to make sure that they are completely dry before you add your foil. And if you have a very thick application of glue, you want to press your foil onto it very lightly at first, because if you squish that glue, it will spread out and then start gluing your carrier sheet to your project. And that's not what you want. So just tap that foil onto your project to get full coverage until you're satisfied. And notice in this close up that the thicker your glue application, the more of a raised design you can get. So these glues give you options. But my favorite thing about these glue pins is that you can alter pre-existing items, papers, embellishments. Here I have some stamped images on that little rectangle and some embellishments from an embellishment pack. And I am just going to add glue to the areas where I wanna spruce them up with foil. And I can do that with any color of foil I want. I don't have to worry about the product not matching the color that I desire. Now here I am sprucing up some pattern paper. I am doing that in a couple of different ways. Now I would just choose one way, but I wanted to give you some examples here. I'm sprucing up the flower buds, the flower petals, the flower stems, as well as just adding polka dots around the paper. So let your heart go wild with these glue pens to create pretty shine on your projects. I'll leave you with this final close up before we move on to the glue stamping technique. I have done this technique in videos before. Now it can be a little bit messy, and if you don't like that, I have an alternative technique coming up next, so stick around for that. What the basis is here is I have a scratch piece of paper, and I am adding a puddle of the two-way um, smart glue from scrapbook.com, and then I'm going to apply my stamp into that glue puddle, kind of rotating it, trying to get even coverage of the glue onto my stamp, and I look at it so I can see. And then I very lightly kiss that stamp to my paper and that matters because if you push too hard on your stamp it's going to squish the glue out around the edges of your stamp and not actually stay on the lines of your stamp and so you'll get better results if you're gentle with this technique also when you're uh, at applying the glue to your stamp you want to be gentle because if the glue seeps into all the nooks and crannies of your image then you will get a blob of an image rather than details of an image and we'll take a look at some of that um, a little bit later and then i should also note that if you're using this um, technique, you should clean your stamps right away. I spray them with a spritz of water over a towel to really wash off that excess glue. And then I will also take them to the sink and scrub them with soap and a toothbrush. And that will keep my stamps healthy so that I don't ruin them with this glue. Once my project is completely dry, then I can go ahead and start adding the foil. I am going to cut this down into smaller pieces so that I don't accidentally touch it to areas I don't intend to. I'm going to start with a larger image and work my way down to smaller images or outline images where I can use up the bits of excess foil in between other images. Here's an overview of what they look like when they are done. Some of these images came out more successfully than others. So I say this technique takes a bit more practice than some of the other techniques. And it all depends on your stamps, your glue, and how light or heavy your hand is. I find the best images for this are simple line images. The hardest images are text and also solid images, even when they're small, like this tiny butterfly. So keep that in mind and give this technique a try. Now this embossing technique solves a lot of the problems of that previous glue technique, but it didn't dawn on me until recently that I could do this. 
but you do need a heat gun for this technique and if you don't own one then this technique won't work for you. I am going to show you this using a specialty um, embossing powder made for this technique, but in the end I'll show you that you don't have to own this specialty product. You can use any embossing powder. The first step of this is embossing like you would any type of embossed image. You use a sticky embossing ink, you sprinkle your embossing powder, and then you heat that powder to set it with your heat tool. Then there's going to be a step two to the foiling process. Here is one way that you can do that. Once your powder is already set, you're going to rewarm and reheat that powder with your heat tool. While it's still warm, you're going to immediately put your foil down on top and kind of burnish it a little bit with your fingers and then peel away your foil. Now, if some of it didn't get hot enough, it won't stick properly to the foil. You just apply a little bit more heat and I find a count of five for the initial reheat and then a count of three for this fill in the missing gaps. And that works pretty well for getting solid coverage, which you can see here in this image. But I'm going to show you how to get even better coverage, and that is using that iron that we used in a previous technique. Again, I'm protecting my surface. I'm going to protect my iron with a scratch piece of paper. And remember, these images have already been heat set with the heat tool before we move to this step. But the advantage to using the iron in this second step is that I think it has a broader heat distribution and also you have a bit of pressure that you can apply to your project. And I think that works for getting a more even coverage result. And I found that my iron was set on about a three. Every iron is different, so experiment with yours. And I gave it a count of about five to get a complete transfer. And safety tip, remember to turn that iron away from you. Ask me how I know. So don't do what I did and don't burn yourself and be safe with that iron. Okay, the previous embossing powder I was using was from WOW and it's called Sticky Foil Bonding Embossing Powder. And I thought, why do I need to use that? Any embossing powder will melt and get sticky with either this heat gun or the iron. So I just use a plain white detailed embossing powder and sure enough, it worked just fine. What I did find was that it took just a little bit longer to melt. So you'll need to add more heat and pressure with your heat tool or your iron here. And again, don't do what I did. I ran my iron over previously foiled surface. As you can see that little missing spot in the bottom right hand corner. But other than having to clean my iron from my little boo-boo, I think this is my favorite technique of all of these. So that's the main techniques. I do have one bonus technique for you, which is using alcohol ink. And I call this a bonus because it's more of a mixed media technique rather than an image technique. And so I'm gonna play with these alcohol inks and I just learned this technique a couple of months ago. So I'm new to this and you'll see me playing and experimenting. I'm applying my ink to three different surfaces. One is a plastic surface, one is a vellum surface, and the other is a glossy paper, like a photo paper. But that photo paper isn't a good surface because it absorbs and dries too quickly. And that is the key to this technique, is having kind of a controlled dry to this ink. And the other key to this technique is having varied puddles of your ink on the paper. So some of it dries faster than other bits of it. And it's the slower drying areas that we're really going for. So after a bunch of experimenting, I came up with this piece on the plastic surface and I'm waiting for it to come to just the right amount of dryness. And wherever the puddles look wetter or kind of sticky for lack of better descriptive words, I am going to scrape the foil with my fingernail over those areas and that wet sticky quality will help the foil stick. Now if your ink is too wet, it's just going to smush the ink around. So this is really a Goldilocks problem where you want to get it dry enough but not too dry. And using your fingernail to scrape the foil onto those areas will help with the transfer. So this technique will take some practice but if you're like me and you like to play with mixed media, look at the result that you get in the end. It is just gorgeous. And I did get it to work on vellum as well, so you don't have to have that specialty plastic paper, and you can make beautiful background creations. Now this video wouldn't be complete without a mention of what didn't work and a few extra tips before we go. So what did not work? The first thing that did not work was this quickie glue pin on top of already foiled pieces. And I was really bummed by this one because I was really trying to get uh, a different color of foil on top of another layer of foil. And for some reason, the glue just didn't stick very well to that base layer of foil. 
Another thing that did not work is I had this glue pad that is made for like uh, stamping and glittering or flocking, but it did not work for foiling because it does not dry sticky and the foil would not adhere as the glue dried either. Another thing that did not work was applying a two-way glue directly to my stamp. I think it just couldn't get enough glue on there. And here's a look at the half the projects that didn't come out, just so you know that I'm keeping it real. Let's move on to a few extra tips before we go. Like I mentioned earlier, I like to cut my foil down before I use it for a couple of reasons. One I already mentioned, but here's a second one. The foil is a little delicate, not totally delicate, but it can get scraped away if you bump or rub it against things. Now just sliding your hand across it won't do it, but any objects that get set upon it or whatnot could scrape it off. Another tip is be very careful that when you're using uh, adhesives that you make sure you're not getting the carrier sheet onto that adhesive and just the foiling onto the adhesive. Otherwise, you're just going to end up gluing your foil carrier sheet to your project. And when you're using glues, you want to make sure that it is totally dry. Sometimes glues can leave uneven surfaces and you want all of the surfaces to be dry or you'll get incomplete foil coverage as well as get glue onto your foil. So both of those are undesirable. But having a glue pin on hand can be helpful. If you get incomplete coverage of your foil, you can always add a little bit of glue pin into those gaps, let it dry completely, refoil that area, and then you'll have better, smoother coverage. If you happen to get excess foil on the edge of a project, either this mono sand eraser or even just a craft knife can help scrape away or erase away those mistakes. Final tip is how to store your foil. I will stack up all my foil with the biggest sheets on the outside, the smallest sheets on the inside, and then I give it a roll up pretty tightly and stick it back in my tube. If you already have some rolls in there, I just stack those pieces up, roll it much more tightly so that it will fit inside the inner diameter and it goes back in my tube. And that only works for tube foils, but I like the deco foil that comes in a tube, so that is what I use. So that is it. We have made it to the end of this foiling video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you got something helpful out of this video, I really do appreciate a thumbs up because that does help my channel. Don't forget to comment and let me know what your favorite technique is or if I missed your favorite technique altogether. I will be back in a couple of days with a layout process video and later this month with a layout featuring foiling. So be sure to subscribe and catch those future videos. Until then, I hope you have an artful day.